For today's video, we are going to talk about how to represent rational functions through table of values, graphs, and equations. And we are going to explain everything in details. So let us define first what is a rational function. So when we say rational function, it is written in the form of f of x equals p of x over q of x, where p of x and q of x are polynomial functions, and q of x is not equal to zero. One of the important things in graphing rational function is to know how to identify the domain of the given function, including the line of asymptotes. So let's have an example. On the first example, consider a 100 meter track used for foot races, represent the speed of a runner as a function of time it takes to run 100 meters in a track. Construct a table of values for the speed of a runner against different run time and plot the graph of function by connecting the points. So the first thing that we are going to do is to represent the speed of a runner as a function time. So in order for us to do that, let us use the triangular formula for distance, speed, and time. So if we are going to illustrate this one, let us draw a triangle. On the top, we have the distance. And on the left, we have the speed. And on the right, we have time. Since we are looking for the speed of a runner as a function of time, let us have speed is equal to distance over time. And since our distance that is 100, we are going to have S equals 100 over time. And since we are asked to represent the speed as a runner as a time, so if we are going to represent time as X, we are going to have S of X equals 100 over X. And this will be our function. And if we are going to create a table of values, we are going to have x, and then we have s of x, and then let us have 10, and then let us have 12, let's say we have 14, and then let's say we have 16, and then 18, and lastly, that is 20. So let us identify the value of s of x with the given values of x. So if the value of x is 10, we are going to have s of x equals 100 divided by 10, and that is 10. And then, if the value of x is 12, that is s of x equals 100 divided by 12, it will give us 8.33. And then, if the value of x is 14, we are going to have 100 divided by 14, and that is 7.14. And if the value of x, that is 16, so we have 100 over 16, and that is 6.25. And if the value of x is 18, we have 100 divided by 18, and that is 5.56. And if the value of x is 20, we have 100 divided by 20, and that is 5. So we are going to have 6.25, and then 5.56, and then 5. So this will be our table of values. So if we are going to plot the given set of points, we are going to have 10 and 10. So let us represent this one as A. And then 12 and 8.33. And then 14 and 7.14. So let us represent this one as C. And then 16 and 6.25. And then we have 18 and 5.56. And lastly, we have 20 and 5. So this is F. So if we are going to connect the given points, let us connect this one. So this is the graph of the function s of x equals 100 over x. So by connecting the points, we can see that they are not collinear, but rather it follows a smooth curve. So this will be our answer. On example number two, 
represent the rational function given by f of x equals x minus 1 all over x plus 1 using a table of values and plot a graph of the function by connecting the points. As you can see, we have the different values of x and all we have to do is to complete the table of values using the function f of x equals x minus 1 all over x plus 1. So let's say if we have f of negative 10, so this is negative 10 minus 1 all over negative 10 plus 1. Negative 10 minus 1, that is negative 11. Negative 10 plus 1 is negative 9. Negative 11 divided by negative 9 is 1.22. If the value of x is negative 8, so this is negative 8 minus 1 all over negative 8 plus 1. So this is negative 9 over negative 7 and that is 1.29. If the value of x is negative 6, so we have negative 6 minus 1 all over negative 6 plus 1. So this is negative 7 over negative 5. And that is 1.4. If the value of x is negative 4, we have negative 4 minus 1 all over negative 4 plus 1. So we have negative 5 over negative 3. And that is 1.67. If the value of x is negative 2, we have negative 2 minus 1 all over negative 2 plus 1. So this is negative 3 over negative 1 and that is 3. If the value of x is 0, we have 0 minus 1 all over 0 plus 1. So this is negative 1 over 1 and that is negative 1. If the value of x is 2, so this is 2 minus 1 over 2 plus 1. So we have 1 third and that is 0 0.33. If the value of x is 4, so we have 4 minus 1 all over 4 plus 1. So this is 3 over 5 and that is 0 0.6. If the value of x is 6, so this is 6 minus 1 over 6 plus 1, so we have 5 over 7, and that is 0 0.71. And then, if the value of x is 8, we have 8 minus 1 over 8 plus 1, so we have 7 over 9, and that is 0 0.71. 78 and if the value of x is 10 so this is 10 minus 1 all over 10 plus 1 so we are going to have 9 over 11 and that is 0 0.82 and this will be our table of values so if we are going to plot the given set of points this is negative 10 and 1.22. This is negative 8 and 1.29. This is negative 6 and 1.4. This is negative 4 and 1.67. This is negative 2 and 3. And this is the location of 0 and negative 1. This is 2 and 0 0.33. This is 4 and 0 0.6. This is 6 and 0 0.71. This is 8 and 0 0.78. And this is 10 and 0 0.82. So let us connect the points from A, B, C, D, E. And let's extend this one. And then let us have F, G, H, I, J, and K. So by connecting the points, we get this graph. So this will be the graph of f of x equals x minus 1 all over x plus 1. 
And if you are going to observe that the function f of x equals x minus 1 all over x plus 1 is undefined at x equals negative 1. That means if you are going to substitute negative 1 on the given function, it will give us undefined. That's why we can connect point E and point F in our graph because there is a point in our graph that will make our function undefined and that is negative 1. So this will be the graph of f of x equals x minus 1 over x plus 1. So I hope you've learned from this video. Thank you so much for watching and God bless us all.